This video covers Power SDR 2.7.2, and this is revision 11.15.16.T11, and I've added a new feature um, called the VOA CAP, which stands for Voice of America Coverage Analysis Program. It was a program written for the VOA so that they could um, see the coverage area from their transmitter site, see who, you know, what signal um, others around the world would get from uh, their transmissions. So you go to the spotter window and here it is right here, VOA cap, but you gotta make sure you got your space weather on because you need either the solar flux or the sunspot number. So activate that. I've got the tracking already on, that's your world map. Um, I can turn the gray line off just to make it a little easier to see. But what you're seeing here is uh, it's created a sunspot number uh, based on the solar flux index number of 77 so the uh, sunspot number comes out to be 7 and it's using 1500 watts uh, and a dipole <clears throat> as the transmitting antenna and a dipole as the receiving antenna so what you're seeing here based on latitude and longitude the star is your transmitter what you put in that spotter window and then the dot pattern is where you're transmitting to. So the size of the dot represents the signal strength, the smallest gray being an S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, uh, S6, S7. So in the 40 meter band, uh, it's pretty strong around me, tapers off to S1 out here. And then every band, it'll do a recalculation so you'll see now in this case 20 meters is pretty much shut down a couple spots here um, that have maybe an S2, S3 but mostly S1, S2 out, out in the middle of the uh, the ocean there's not much coverage there now you do have the option uh, of selecting a beam versus a dipole uh, so if I add that in there change the antenna you notice it gives me more coverage area so obviously if you have a better antenna you will be transmitting meaning people in these locations would hear you transmitting 1500 watts on a beam if this algorithm is correct but of course that this does not take into account any geomagnetic storms although in my algorithm I'm trying to reduce the power output if it senses a geomagnetic storm so again <clears throat> the map will show where you're at. Now if I go into the spotting window and I change my location, let's just change that to zero. So now it moved, let me get this out of the way here. So now it moved, if I'm here, uh, I guess like right next to, right, right between Spain and France, uh, this would be my map currently on 40 meters with the sun being over here. Uh, I've got quite a bit of a map, uh, you know, some fairly decent signals all around this area. So it just all depends on where it is. You're just seeing who can receive you, and technically it should be reciprocal. Uh, you should be able to hear them with 1,500 watts if they can hear you. But uh, let me put it back to where I was, and then it'll do the recalculation. And then this changes hour by hour, <clears throat> so you'll see it diminish. If the solar flux number gets updated the next hour, you'll see it change accordingly. And, uh, and then if you see any red dots, you know, they, they would be from your DX spotting window. They still stay active, but I would advise not to leave this on all the time because it's going to cover up a lot of information, so turn it off when you're not using it. But again, it, you, it has to be with the world map, the tracking map on. So it's not on unless I actually turn the tracking map on. And then the beam, like I said, if if, if you want to see um, what the pattern would be with a, uh, in this case, that's a, uh, a three element um, beam at 35 feet. And uh, that's it.